Well, welcome to the channel viewers. You're a Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Thank you for joining me. We're at Gosford. The beautiful Gosford. Your relationships, probably your intimate relationship, is probably the most important part of your life relative to damage and what can happen to you. Look at these birds. I do apologize, I've had tremendous equipment problems. I do ask um, for your forgiveness. But your intimate relationship is going to have a tremendous impact on your life, both positive and negative. Look at these two ducks, male and female. Or no, it could be two females. I'm not sure. But look at them. That's pretty good footage, isn't it, viewers? Look. I frightened them. I don't want to frighten them. Um, and so, it's something that you want to take tremendous care of. You don't want to be hurt in a relationship. And you don't want to hurt somebody else either. But unfortunately, this seems to happen or be happening more and more often now in this time in which we live. I, I don't think I over... I have an overemphasis on my um, attention that I want to give to my relationship and the way in which I want it to be healthy and happy. But I've run into some people that just aren't going to reciprocate that. And this has happened through enmeshment. They're enmeshed. They're enmeshed with their children. They're enmeshed with family members, interferers that seem to be able to um, sabotage the relationship. And this is coming uh, to these people by way of previous relationship breakdowns. And they surrogate their children. And they become, and these are adult children, they could be late teens, early 20s, 30s. By the time they're in their 30s, it's pretty well a part of their life by then. There's not much you're going to be able to do, to do about it. It's going to come down to the individual's ability to navigate their relationship in a healthy way. And I've, I've met some really nice people, women, that have just been unable to get to the finish line successfully in the relationship and this has come at great expense you may not see it on the surface but it comes at great expense because when you have a relationship breakdown it comes at a cost will we walk along there yeah we'll walk along there it comes at great cost psychological cost the pain the, the trauma even see this is what I've learned viewers and it's really important even the dumper suffers trauma in a relationship breakup even the dumper suffers trauma because you can't be in a relationship with somebody and think that you're just going to be able to walk away unscathed. It doesn't work like that. The human psychology and our spirit and the way that we're made up doesn't work like that. It's just not how it works. Um, and so it's really important to give yourself time to meet somebody and to get to know them before you start to engage sexually with them. But you might say, well, what are they like sexually? Well, 
I can give credence to that. If you want to try that and see if it's all compatible, good. But what's happened to me in the last dozen women or so that I've met, and this is the truth without telling a lie, they've I've gone for a walk along the waterfront with them here and the next thing we're back having sex within an hour. How's that supposed to work? The last woman I met on the internet, I went to her place with Chinese. We were smashing within an hour. Two years it lasted and the ass fell out of it and it was horrific. It was the shortest relationship I've ever had. Two years. Dealing with enmeshment and all the breakdown and crap and garbage of that had nothing to do with me. So you've got to be you got to be careful of who you become intimate with. Because if you're a person that wants to build something substantial and you're in with the wrong person, you're just going to become a form of supply. You're just going to become a form of sexual supply and possibly to some extent emotional supply. And if that person's narcissistic or psychopathic or there's some other absence in their makeup, just some ducks there viewers, splashing around, that's a male and a female. Um, you're going to pay a price for that. I'll say that again. If the person that you meet has a personality or character flaw or something of this type of thing, hey mate, um, you're going to pay. And you can pay in all different ways. And the fact of the matter is, it's not about you, it's about them. What's happening with them? But the problem is, when you want a relationship to work, you'll start to challenge yourself and ask yourself, where am I going wrong? How can I make this work? How can I improve this situation? How can I make it better? What can I do to fix things? And you get deeper into this relationship and you're wasting your time. I'm just going to ask what's happening at the stadium. G'day mate, what's, what, is that the women's footy today, is it? Can you get tickets at the gate? Um, around the, yeah, the east. Oh, over there. What time are they kicking off? Uh, kick off is 22. They have a couple of games, don't they? No, it's only one. Just today. the one. Yeah. Who's playing again? Uh, Roosters and uh, Eels. That'll be a good game, won't it? See you, mate. Yeah. <clears throat> Might go. Um, and so you're investing yourself into a situation that you don't belong. You're being driven by your loyalty and your devotion into a situation that you don't belong. And that's not healthy on your part. Maybe that is part of codependency, as we've got a fisherman there. Hey, you know what? I'll tell you something. I've been in these waters for 50 years. Me and my granddad used to fish up there on those rocks 50 years ago. Just that little sea up there. Yeah. Good flathead brim spot at sunset and sunrise. Yeah. That's all sandbar just down in there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's a good spot there. I hope yeah. you get something. Oh, I've got a few already. Good on you. Good to see you out. Um, 
See, codependency is driven by our innate um, loyalty and faithfulness to things that we commit ourselves to. And sometimes we can't stop the momentum of that. This happens to a lot of people in cults that I used to help. This happens to a lot of criminals. They become attached and addicted to behaviors that are wrong and illegal. And their loyalty, devotion and faithfulness commits to these things. <coughs> Kookaburras, look. That was a kookaburra being attacked by that magpie. Oh. Um. And the attachment uh, becomes so thick that it's very difficult to find your way out of it. And so. This is where we come undone. We don't understand our loyalty bind. And when we release it into the wrong areas and the wrong places, that's where we get into trouble. Love the sound of those little peewee magpies. So a lot of it's got to do with a misaligned loyalty and faithfulness and devotion and where we put it, where we release it. And when we release these things, it's very hard to wind them back. That's where the trauma comes from because we've put ourselves, bound ourselves, tied ourselves, fettered ourselves to things that we shouldn't have. And this ne ain't necessarily the other person's fault. It's our fault. It's got a lot to do with our decisions and not managing ourselves properly in these areas. So in a lot of ways, it's really not fair to blame other people for the decisions and the, the determinations that we've decided to have in these situations. That's why we miss the red flags. And red flags ain't a criticism of the other person the red flags are for us to go, hang on a sec, I don't belong. But we don't listen to that because we're too determined by deception of our devotion and loyalty. We've set our mind on something that we ought not to have. And this disempowers us. It disempowers our decision making and where we position ourselves. If you find yourself with somebody that's starting to fade or they're just not resolving problems, the warning signs were there at the start. There's a world of people out there that just want casual sex. They don't want a long-term relationship. They've done it, they've had it, they're broken, they're dismayed, <coughs> they don't believe in it, they've been hurt. They just are following their instinctive needs not necessarily wanting to build something substantial I've seen it, I've married these people I've been in relationships with these people and you just learn okay, I'll show a little bit of tolerance I'm not able to attach because you can read the flags we'll see what this person does and 100% it turns out a mess I've seen them try and reach to where I was but it's very hard and a lot of them don't and you can't criticize somebody for that you've come along they're giving it a go it's not not their fault it's just how it is so our loyalty bind can and I'll just give you a shot of these ducks deceive us Look at him. into 
being in situations that we don't belong. And then when the how are you, mate? Good. How are you? Good, buddy. Then when the ass falls out of everything and the relationship goes to pieces, we just don't want to accept it. We get hurt. And so we go into finding our way to heal. You've been listening to Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison here at Gosford on the Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. We're on a walk. Beautiful walk. And if this content has helped you about loyalty and devotion and faithfulness and how they can deceive us, and it's not the other person's fault, it's usually our own, um, consider pressing the like button, maybe even the subscribe button. You can share any of my content. And I would love for you to comment because I need to hear other people's stories relative to this stuff. I learned about loyalty bind and faithfulness and devotion deceiving people from religion. And don't think Christianity's void of all these problems. It's not. It's not. It applies to everyone. And we need to get to know ourselves better. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison. Thank you for joining me. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.